two days ago, I was here on YouTube, Catholic live stream. We're talking about the pulling down and desecration of two statues in California of Junipero Serra, the great Franciscan missionary priest of California. And I said on that show, look, folks, they're not going to stop with Junipero Serra. Catholic saints are going to come after the Blessed Mother. But ultimately, they're going to come after images of our Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't even 24 hours after that video came out that this activist, Sean King, this guy right here, he came out with this crazy tweet calling for the destruction of images of Jesus. It's all over the place. It went viral. I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to give you the talking points. We're going to pray. But uh, here's what this guy said. Yes, I think statues of the white European they claim as Jesus should all also come down. They are a form of white supremacy. Always have been. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark. Tear them down. Tear them down. Iconoclasm. This is it, folks. This is it. Got five talking points today. I'm lit up, by the way. I'm so ticked about this. Uh, we're going to talk about who this Sean guy is and what he said. We're going to talk about how these activists are going to progress against Christians. It's going to end in martyrdom if it's not stopped. Third point, we're going to talk about the history of iconoclasm. I'm going to tell you about St. Theodosia. This is a lady who gave up her life protecting an image of Jesus Christ. Beautiful story. You're going to love it. Fourth point, I'm going to talk about what will likely happen this year. And then last of all, fifth point, I'm going to give you three points of action so that you can get started. All right. Now, before we begin, this is going to be a great video. I want everyone to please like the video, hit that thumbs up. And while you're, while you're there at the thumbs up, right next to it is the share button. Please share this video on YouTube. That's my favorite thing. If you could do that, I am greatly appreciative. A million thank yous to everyone who shares this video. And then also, if you're new, please subscribe. We are live. It's uh, noon today and I'm live streaming. And if you want to be notified, hit subscribe and notifications on and you will get notified every time I go live to talk about current events and what's going on. And now we're going to pray. We're going to pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us, the Lord's Prayer in Latin. Oremus. In nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater noster, qui es in celi, sanctificete nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. And, Almighty God, we ask that you would strengthen us and give us the graces to defend Holy Mother the Church, to defend your honor, and to defend the sacred images that are set up in your churches and in public spaces to your greater glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In nomine Patris et Fidii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right. Well, this guy, Sean, I'm going to call him Sean. He thinks that uh, any images of Jesus as white need to be taken down. Now, a lot of people have brought up the fact that Sean himself, although he claims to be an African-American, he's got white parents, white brother, the whole thing's a little bit sketchy, but I just want to bring up a fact here. Uh, the color of your skin, he's talking about a white Jesus, so a painting in which Christ is, so here's an image of the Last Judgment by St. Michael next to my head right here, okay? So you can see Christ, okay, and you can see his skin color, you can see my skin color, it's white. The color of your skin doesn't determine necessarily your race. I mean, look at this guy, Sean, right here, I'll pull him up right next to my face here. He's about the same color as I am. So the pigment that an artist uses in a statue, in an icon, in stained glass, etc., doesn't necessarily mean that there's this, this huge conspiracy. As he says right here, they are a form of white supremacy. I mean, this is insane. This is completely insane. Now, Ultimately, this is not about the pigment that an artist chose to paint a picture. Ultimately, this is about atheism. It's about hatred of God. It's about creating a victim class 
so that we can begin the Marxist revolution of have-nots against haves. That's the Marxist revolution. That's how Lenin, Stalin did it, Chairman Mao. It's how all the communists do it. Why? Because they want to create an atheistic state. Now, how will this progress? Well, here's how I think it's going to happen. We already know, first of all, they go after the political figures. They've been doing that for weeks now. Then they go after the religious figures or the saints, Unipro Serra. We saw that happening. Then they go after the Blessed Virgin Mary. Then they will go after images of Jesus Christ, the cross, the crucifix. And here's the scary part. Next, they go after the churches and the cathedrals and the parishes. They're going to show up and disrupt your mass, your service. They're going to come in on Sunday morning hooting and hollering. Maybe they'll spray paint the wall. I don't know what they're going to do, but they have no respect and they want this colonization. That's how they see it. To be destroyed and humiliated. They want to humiliate us. And then after that, the final progression, I'm going to give you some historical examples, is not just the attack of the statue of the saint or the statue of Jesus or the actual building, the church where the people are assembled, but the attack on the Christian. I'm talking about martyrdom. Giving up your life for Jesus Christ. Now, this has happened in history. It happened in Constantinople in the 700s. There is a giant uh, theological controversy over the heresy of iconoclasm. There were Christians who said, look, the Ten Commandments say that you shall not make graven images, worship them or serve them. Therefore, we can't have any images in the churches. We can't have an image of a Bible scene. We can't have an image of Jesus on the cross. We can't have an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary or a saint or even a cross. So they tore everything down. And guess what? Eventually it led to killing Christians. Then we get to the 1500s, Protestant Reformation, England, same thing. There are so many beautiful pieces of artwork in churches from the 1500s where they came in and then the 1600s came in and they chipped off the faces of saints, Christ, the Blessed Virgin Mary, etc. French Revolution, they did the same thing. They defiled and desecrated statues. 1900s, they did it in Russia. They did it in Spain. They did it in Mexico. Go see that film, The Greater Glory. It's a great film. Or for greater, for greater Glory. They are shooting statues of Jesus Christ. Firing squad. They hate God and they hate Christ. That's the problem. Now, I'm going to share this story of St. Theodosia. It's a beautiful story. Before I do, I want everybody to hit the like button and share this video. All right, I'm going to put Theodosia, this beautiful saint woman. First of all, I'm going to get this guy off the screen. Did I finish reading this? Yeah. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, where did they, uh, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark, tear them down. Yeah. What were they going to do? Get on an airplane and go to Denmark? This guy, he's got to go. He's got to go. And get rid of, I don't want to look at his face anymore. I want to look at this beautiful saint's face. Pull up an icon here. Saint Theodosia. There she is. Now listen to Saint Theodosia. What she was all about. After this, I'm gonna. If you're not a Catholic and you're like, I don't know why you guys are into images. Sounds like a violation of the Ten Commandments. I'm gonna explain to you why we Catholics venerate and honor images, and then it's gonna be legit, and you're gonna be convinced. All right, listen to this. Theodosia was a nun living in a monastery in Constantinople on January nineteenth, seven twenty nine, in the year of our Lord. At the beginning of the iconoclastic persecution, the Emperor Leo the Third order that an icon of Christ, which stood over the Calcae gate of the imperial palace, be removed. So the emperor, the Byzantine emperor says, I want that icon, this public icon, over the gate, public space. Sound familiar? The emperor says, take down that icon, that image of Jesus Christ. While an officer of the emperor was executing the order, a group of women gathered to prevent the operation. Among them was Theodosia. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Where are the men? Where are the men? Why is it that a bunch of pious ladies had to run out and do the right thing? Guys, we need to step up. This goes back to the Garden of Eden. 
Adam should have been fighting the serpent, not Eve. Can't sit around playing video games, watching football and all that stupid. You got to go out there and, and make the world great for Christ. All right, it goes on. A group of women gathered to prevent the removal of the icon. Among them was Theodosia, who shook the ladder strongly until the officer fell from it. The man died from his injuries, and Theodosia was arrested and brought to the Forum Bovis, where she was executed by having a ram's horn hammered through her neck. Following the triumph of or orthodoxy over iconoclasm, she was recognized as a martyr and a saint, and her body was kept and venerated in the church of Hagia Euphemia, in the quarter named, and it's a long Greek word, named after the houses owned there. It corresponds to the modern, okay, so so on, that's it. This lady, who was a nun, came out, there's a guy trying to rip down the image of Christ, she shakes the ladder, the guy falls off, he's dead, she gets arrested, they kill her by taking a ram's horn and hammering it through her neck. Now, let me ask you, all you, how many we got, what, 2,516 people watching, would you suffer this punishment to defend an image of Jesus? This is a question we need to ask ourselves because she is a saint. In the Catholic Church, her saint day is July 18th. Maybe we need to have a big rally on July 18th. That's coming up in less than a month. The Saint Theodosia Day. The team Saint Theodosia. We're going to go out there and defend these sacred images to death. To death. Now, maybe you're watching this like, I don't know, Ted. I mean, like, give up your life or, for a picture of Jesus seems kind of extreme. Okay, and then also we got some Protestants here. They're thinking, I don't know, man, you guys worship saints and you worship statues. That's totally pagan. I don't like it. All right, so in the 700s when St. Theodosia was alive, there was a debate. Clearly, the Ten Commandments say don't worship graven images. However, great saints like St. John of Damascus and others said, look, Christ, according to St. Paul, is the icon of the Father. That's what the Greek says. He's the icon of the Father. In the Old Testament, there was no visible representation of God, completely invisible. So there was no way to make a statue or an icon or a photograph of God. You had nothing to work with. But in the New Testament, the Word became flesh. Christ became a human. You could touch him. You could anoint him with oil. You could give him a fish and he would eat the fish. He wasn't a ghost. If he had a camera, you could have taken a, a, a photo of him. So he was visible. What was invisible through the incarnation in the womb of the Virgin Mary became visible. And so this began a new economy of images. And we use images to teach the faith. So churches can have Bible scenes, images, and we can also depict saints, holy people that we admire, like this St. Theodosia. We can have pictures of them so we can teach our kids. Oh, that's St. Theodosia. Here's what she did. Let me tell you about her. So there's an educational and there's a devotional. And so the theologians of the Catholic Church, primarily in the Eastern Catholic Church, said, okay, we got to get our terms right. In Greek, there's a term, latria, in a term, dulia. They said latria, which is related to the word latron, means payment or higher. It's what you owe to God. This is the highest form of worship. And we only give latria to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, by extension, we Catholics believe that the Eucharist is truly Jesus Christ. And so we also give latria the highest worship, divine worship, to uh, the Eucharist. So the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, and by extension from the, the, the divine Son, the Eucharist. But when it comes to people who aren't the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, not the three divine persons of the Trinity, we give them dulia. Dulia, this is a lesser form of veneration. So for example, if you saluted the flag, 
you're showing honor and respect not for a piece of fabric you're showing honor and respect for the united states of america if you're in america you're not worshiping the flag likewise you can do things physically and in your mind to show respect to say uh, an image of here saint theodosia i wouldn't step on this image i wouldn't throw it in a trash can I wouldn't put it on the floor or spill a Coke on it. No, I would treat this image of a saint with respect, just like I'd treat an image of my wife with respect or my grandmother. Treat it with respect. So there's two kinds of veneration. This is what the Catholic Church believes and the Eastern Church believes. There's Latria, which is for God alone, and then there's Dulia, which is for saints, holy items. For example, we would give Dulia not only to say, an icon of St. Theodosia, but also an altar, uh, a church, um, holy items, a chalice, etc. So that's the Catholic theology. So when we're defending holy items, it's not just like this statue means a lot to me. What we're saying is, is this: if you defile this image, this icon or statue, you are you are committing a sin of desecration. Desecration. It's actually a sin against the first commandment. You're desecrating and against the the, uh, the third commandment, which would be to keep holy. Oh, no, sorry. That's the, uh, the, the second commandment to not take God's name in vain. And by extension, all holy things in vain. So we must defend that which is sacred. And St. Theodosia is a great example of defending that which is good. Now, with the Theodosia, where were the bishops? Where were the priests? Where were the men? It's a bunch of women, nuns, fighting the fight. I was, you know, on Sunday, I said, where are the bishops? The bishops of California, these statues of Junipero Serra were pulled down in L.A. and San Francisco. Where are the bishops? I said, they need to put their big boy pants on, their big boy cassock, their big boy mitre, get their crozier, go out to these sites where these statues have been torn down and desecrated and preach the kingdom of God. They need to say, you have desecrated the statue of a saint. The saint brought the gospel. He brought Jesus. He brought mercy. He brought love. He brought the good news to this land and this state. And you have just defied everything he taught. You need Jesus, as the meme says. And these bishops need to say, we will not stand for this. We will protect, like St. Theodosia here, we will protect these sacred statues because they're important to us. Just like if you came and said, I'm going to rip up the, the, uh, the photos in your wedding album with your wife. I'd say, no, you're not. And we might get into fisticuffs over it. If you really went violent with me and tried to tear up my wedding album, because that's important to me. It symbolizes and signifies something important to me. And signs matter. That's being Catholic. We believe signs matter. And then before I went live today, somebody sent me this. This really ticked me off. Bishop Barron. I asked Barron, what actions are they going to do to stop this, the taking down of statues? He told me that's the lady's job. You're better than that, Bishop Barron. That's weak. No. Be the St. Boniface, Bishop Barron. Any bishop. All bishops out there. Put on your big boy mitre. And go out there and be a successor of the holy apostles. This is what we need right now. We can't. That's, what, that's the lady's job. The bishops are the generals. Bishops are the leaders. They're the princes of the church. We're in such a mess. We got no bishops leading us. It's Bishop Barron, we don't want you to go on YouTube and tell us about the latest uh, Marvel movie or whatever movie and say, oh, there's this Christian principle in it. We want you to stand up and be a bishop. We don't need movie commentaries. Flannery O'Connor, cool, whatever. Go be a bishop. 
proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world that is rebelling. What if they throw a rock? What if things get violent? This lady right here, St. Theodosia, she went for it. She's a saint. Jesus said, well done, good and faithful servant to St. Theodosia. St. Theodosia could do it. We can get our bishops and our priests to do it. That's what we need to do. Now, I'm going to give you, I'm going to close up here with three points of action. Thanks everybody for being here today. Oh, wow. We just hit 3000. That's great. Thank you so much. Three action points. Okay, number one. I mentioned this earlier. I was thinking about writing a book on how to reclaim Christian culture. And one chapter would be called this. Take up public space. This is how you fight a culture war. Christians don't know. Christians have forgotten this. We used to be so good at it. You want to know why? There are men dressed up in funny clothes down at your public library reading books to kids. Do you want to know why? They are taking over public space. That's a government building. And by taking their agenda in an extravagant way in front of your community's children, they are taking up space. You, in a war, you take ground, more and more ground. You take high ground. That's government space and religious space is the high ground. This is why there are these reading hours at your local library. They are publicly taking up space. Why are there marches to take up public space? Why do they take their icons, their memes, their signals? I'm talking about rainbows and things like that. And plaster them and put them everywhere and put up flags and streamers and all that. And put it in their restaurants to take up public space. That's how you win a culture war. We Catholics used to have public processions. Everybody had a statue of Mary out front, crucifix in every room, statues in the backyard, statues in the public square, statues outside the church, statues on the church, St. Patrick's Day parade that were dedicated to the saint who brought the gospel of Jesus to Ireland. We used to take up space. Now we're retreating and they're taking the higher ground. You have to take up space. How do you take up space? Every single one of you watching, I want all of you to put a statue out in your front yard. Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Francis, Jesus. You need to publicly take up space. This is a Catholic house. This is a Catholic family. It's in everyone's face. They know it. And you're saying, this property, this geography right here, it belongs to Jesus. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You need a crucifix in every room of your house. Doesn't have to be elaborate. You need a crucifix over your front door. If you have land, if you own a ranch, put a big cross out there. You own land on the side of the highway, put up a big cross. You see this in Texas, it's great. Take up space. They plaster all their stuff everywhere. Let's plaster our stuff everywhere. And what's cool is, as Catholics, when these things are blessed, they become sacramentals, which means they're a means of grace to us and to the world. So you have to take up space. Number two, that's number one. Take up space with public devotion, images, icons. You own a restaurant? Put up an image of Our Lady Guadalupe. Put up Padre Pio. Put a crucifix on the wall. This is a Catholic restaurant. You don't like it? Don't eat here. Bye. This is what we stand for. They put in our face, big rainbow. Well, oh, you don't like it? You, you don't eat here. This is a cultural war. Number two, stop those who are going to deface and desecrate Catholic images. It's not the narrative that some bishops are saying, oh, this is private property. No, that's weak. This is not about private property. This is about desecration. It's about sin and offense against God. We got to re, rethink this and get our vocabulary right 
These people are desecrating sacred images, not stealing or vandalizing private property. No, no, no. Y'all got this? Now, what do we do about it? Here are some suggestions. Put some guards out. If, if they're saying we're going to go get that statue, you put out guards. Hire armed guards. Hire the police. Fences. Yes, fences are good. The little barbed wire on top. If they're coming after it. You go to Europe. There's beautiful public statues. They often have fences around them just so jokers don't go and start climbing on them and break off an arm. So fences are good. Video cameras. That's cheap. Nowadays, you can get video cameras on Wi-Fi or wired up. Cheap. 100 bucks. Let's put some video. Let's have some men out here donate some money and put some video cameras. And then we can file charges and get these people who are desecrating sacred images. And if there's groups advocating this, we go after them. So number one, take up public space. Number two, stop these people. Make preventative measures so they can't do it. And then number three, so important. We need to encourage our priests and our bishops to stand up. The biggest disappointment since COVID and everything that's happened since COVID is just the the silence and the weakness from the majority of our clergy. Not all. There's heroic, awesome ones. You hear me talking about them. Salute to Archbishop Vigano. Many, many, many more. Many, many, many more. But the majority, they're the silent majority. They're sitting around doing nothing. It's this. It's the Bishop Barron. He told me that it's the lady's job. Baloney. Why are you guys celibate? You're celibate because you don't have a wife to worry about. You don't have kids at home. You don't have to worry about getting fired from your job, not paying the mortgage. College funds, all the stuff that we married men have to worry about. You guys don't have to worry about that. If I go out to try to stop someone taking down an image of Christ and I, someone rams a ram horn through my neck, my kids don't have a dad. My wife's a widow. Cool thing about priests and monks and bishops is they don't leave any of that behind. They're free to be heroic. That's what celibacy is not about saving money on the payroll at the local parish. Celibacy is about heroic action. So we need to encourage our priests and bishops to fulfill that heroic cause that they joined, which is to extend the kingdom of God, to be like John the Baptist. John the Baptist wasn't married. He wasn't afraid either. He cut his head off. To be like St. Paul, went all over the world preaching the gospel. They stoned him. Many times they whipped him. He suffered starvation. But he did it all for the gospel, all for Jesus. We, lay people, want to rally. We so bad in our hearts, we want to rally against some holy priests and bishops. Just take one or two of you. We're going to come out. We're going to come out with our financials. We're going to come out with our time. We're going to come out with our families. We're going to come out with everything we got to support you holy priests and bishops who will take a stand. We're just waiting and trying to find out where are you? We need you, but you need to stand up and take the first step. Like I said on Sunday, shouldn't be Taylor Marshall making this video. I want to go make a video about Thomas Aquinas, do some philosophy or something. I don't want to make a video about Sean, uh, take tearing down images of white Jesus and trying to get fire under clergy to stand up and do something. Listen, if you're a priest or a bishop, this is a great, I mean, this is the moment in which saints are forged right now. We're not living in peace. This is the time to stand up and to be a great witness of Jesus Christ. So three action points. I want everyone here. How many we got? Uh, over 3,000. Take up public space. I want every single one of you, when this video is over, 
I want you to go to your Catholic bookstore. I want you to go to an online Catholic store. I want you to find a nice outdoor statue that you like, that your family likes. It's Jesus, Mary, St. Francis, whoever. I want you to put that out in front of your house and be proud of it. Get it blessed by your priest. I want you to put a crucifix over your front door. I want you to put sacramentals in your house, St. Benedict medals, bless palms. The heathens, the Buddhists, and the Hindus, and all the, even the New Agers put up their dream catchers and all this baloney all over the place. And their flags and their rainbows. Come on, let's get with it. I want everybody to take up public space. We need to get our churches and our priests to do public processions in May for Mary, for Corpus Christi. We got to be out in the community. People need to see us. Oh, there's the Catholics. There's the Catholics. Number two, we got to learn how to stop people from doing this. Prevention, fences, guards, video cameras. And then number three, we got to just keep writing and begging our priests and our bishops to take a stand, to be the generals. And we will fall in line. We will fall in line. Be awesome. So there it is. Thanks for watching, everyone. We're going to pray in just a moment. If you like this video, you agree with it, Hit the thumbs up. I would appreciate that. That tells YouTube it's a good uh, a good show. And then while you're there, share this video on YouTube. There's a little share button. You click that. You see the Facebook icon. You click that. And then your friends and your family who are thinking, what's going on right now? Then come watch this video. Hopefully it helps them. Especially if they're Protestant. They're like, why are you Catholics worshiping images? Yet We don't worship images. We have Latria and Dulia. Latria goes to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Dulia goes to images and saints. There's a distinction that we have. We're not worshiping uh, an icon like it's God. That's not Catholicism. You share that with people, they'll hear that and they'll get it. And then also, if you want to watch live, subscribe, hit the notification bell, turn it on. If you're on a mobile device, make sure you turn notifications on or you won't be notified. And then also, our good buddy Dan, who moderates, he has a second channel curated. He takes these longer videos and he cuts them into two-minute, three-minute, five-minute bite size. It's called the Dr. Taylor Marshall Highlights channel. So please subscribe to that second channel and you'll get the highlights. You can get all the best of, the greatest hits. And then also, thanks everyone who supports on Patreon. If you want to support this channel financially, uh, I'll send you some free autographed books. I'll send you a copy of my book, infiltration signed uh there's all kinds of levels and different merch and cool stuff on there so check it out patreon.com forward slash dr taylor marshall and you'll get cool stuff and help support the show all right now we're going to pray and um, we're going to pray for our bishops and our priests and we're going to pray that some of them all of them get the fortitude of this nun right here this lady Saint Theodosia. She was awesome. I need to get an icon of Saint Theodosia. Put it right here. They took a ram's horn and hammered it through her nun's neck. She's a little little nun. They got a ram's horn and hammered it through the lady's neck. Because she loved Jesus and she wanted to protect the images of Jesus. That's amazing. All right, we're going to pray now. We're going to pray the Hail Mary. And the glory be that God pours out actual graces on our bishops and priests. They become these great generals, great saints. We lay people can get behind them and follow them into battle. Oremos. Nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave, Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or prenobis peccatoribus, nunc et etor mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicoterat in principio, et nunc, et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Gracious God, we lift up to you all of our bishops, our priests, our pastors. We ask that you would give them new graces, renew their ordination, give them graces, and give them heroic acts, and help us to love them and to follow them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right. And remember, in the meantime, what do we all have to do? We need to stay connected to Jesus. We have to pray every single day. 
the easiest, the best, the fastest way to do that and to begin a life of prayer is to pray the rosary every single day. You might be processing, why do you want to pray beads? Why do you want to repeat prayers over and over? Look, the rosary is meditating on the mysteries that the Blessed Virgin Mary gave to a, a friar named St. Dominic in the 1200s to destroy all heresies. Iconoclasm is a heresy. It is condemned by the Seventh Ecumenical Council, the Second Council of Nicaea. In order to destroy the heresy of iconoclasm, we must use the weapon, and the weapon is the rosary. So pray the rosary every day. If you don't pray the rosary against iconoclasm, you're not on the team. You're not on the team. You can't sit around and complain about bishops or priests or America or any of these activists. You can't. You can't complain. If you're not picking up the weapon and using it, the weapon is the rosary. Pray the rosary every day or you're just not on the team. Simple as that. Simple as that. Well, that's a show. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, lots of news. Man, I need to take a break. Stuff just keeps rolling out, but it's good. And remember that our Lord Jesus Christ said you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. We'll see you tomorrow live. Make sure you subscribe so you get notified. Till then, God bless. Godspeed. St. Theodosia, pray for us.